Hello, Crafty Andy here, and these are my thoughts. So, continuing on with the theme of adolescence, why not go into the crazy shit that we did as kids and teens growing up? Man, there was a lot of crazy shit that we did. Well, a lot of crazy stuff other kids did, mainly. I didn't really have a childhood within school. Everyone was experimenting and having sex in the late 90s and early 2000s. The closest I got to penetration was when a kid stabbed me multiple times with a pencil. Yeah, he just walked up and I don't know what he said. He called me a fag, among other things, as he just started randomly stabbing me with the pencil. Not so far to uh, cause serious injury. No, kids know how to hurt but not leave a lot of marks. Uh, I also didn't want to fight back because it was after Columbine and zero tolerance policies were in place. It was made very clear to us that any fighting, no matter what we do, we'd both be suspended for the year. The thought of being stuck there in high school an extra year made me keep the passive route. It actually makes me physically ill reliving these moments in my head, so excuse me. But I did have a few friends and despite the times they treated me like shit so badly that I would commit self-harm and possible suicide, it led to a lot of stories to tell. In fact, being so alone and isolated out of my small amount of friends in nearly every class allowed me to eavesdrop on all kinds of fun conversations and stories. Here is all the stuff that I remember. One girl caught her boyfriend blowing the family dog. And man, she make a, a huge, a soft, whispering scene about it. Another was a rumor going around about another male student who posted his dog's sexcapades on Kazaa. One kid practically boasted how he took $20 to let his dog lick his balls and talked about how good it felt. This girl and I went out on a few dates, and we didn't even get past holding fucking hands. Fairly certain she went out with me over pity. I was such a shy, quiet, awkward little shit. I want to get laid myself until I was 19. Anyways, in high school, aside from me and one other, and all my friends got laid. This is all early 2000s, by the way. In fact, one of my best friends and his girlfriend at 14 included rape fantasy sex in the woods, getting a blowjob in front of another friend of ours. There was at least half a dozen times me and him would hog the very back row of the movie theater, and then I would sit at the very end while his girlfriend went to town on his schlong and just casually throw the baby rag on the ground. There was one other guy that I heard talking about how hard it was to play Super Mario while he was getting a BJ from his girlfriend. Uh, one of my other friends at 15 shared a picture of his dick wearing a top hat to a girl and for a week she tried to figure out who it was. Funny that can and has landed a lot of kids on the sex offenders registry for life. In fact, when I graduated high school I hung my ass out the window of a car while we drove by. That could have put me in the same category as a rapist that waits for elementary school kids in the bushes. Speaking of elementary school, before the internet, in the fifth grade, I would work my way from thinking about girls to drawing lewd furry porn and hiding it in the bed. My first exposure to porn was in the sixth grade, a year later actually, when we broke into a closet full of it, including a blank sex tape. Man, were we lucky, because thinking back, far as we knew, that could have just been a parental sex tape, and how awkward would that have been? And this is not including a lot of the stories that I picked up on out of high school. There was a lot of girls who had their first sexual experiences as children. It was like some alternate universe to hear like, Oh yes, uh, my first blowjob I gave was in the 8th grade or the 7th grade. There was a couple of friends that I made that it turned out when they were 16, they were posting porn of themselves online saying that they were 18, not knowing what kind of shit they could get themselves into, let alone anyone that downloads it. Now one girl that I knew told me how when she was uh, very young, another girl her age would tie her up and make her do things. Or do things to her, I should say. And kids can get into some dark, twisted shit. Anyone who says kids are innocent, they're, <laughs> they, they haven't experienced the torture and torment kids can cause. There's nothing more pure and cruel as a child. That's all the juicy stuff I remember outside of the times I wanted to kill myself or my classmates. If you have any crazy stories regarding your own childhoods, I love to hear them. Then we could make this a thing. Let's just make it clear right now. Adults should not be having sex with children. That includes 17 and below. 
whatever the age of consent is in your country or state. And I'm old enough now that I want to pursue anyone under the age of 25, if at all. Let's make those positions clear before anyone gets any ideas as we go into this video a little further. I mentioned all these things in relation to the Cuties movie. The latest thing people get to virtue signal about and then pretend to boycott Netflix over. Hey, I had the same reaction everyone else did when that poster came to light. But really, I think they knew what they were doing. I think they knew 99% of the people would be outraged instead of attracted to it. You could say it's sexualizing children, but I grew up in the 90s when child beauty pageants got its first big exposure. Sexualization happens in the mind. It doesn't matter how much footage you show me of these 13 year old girls dancing around and shaking their butts. It's not going to be attractive to me. Are the people being outraged about this so much because they are trying to overcompensate for something? Hmm, I don't know. And once again, petitions and all this effort and energy spent on a movie rather than the real things that are going on and say, I don't know, the sex trafficking in Florida, for instance. Just saying. I mean, you can be outraged about both. But it seems like people are more uh, putting their efforts into one category or the other. Or is it just the fact that they can't handle the truth that a lot of kids are getting into this shit? Also ignoring the fact that, again, this is nowhere near child beauty pageant levels where you have eight-year-olds getting Botox injections. Or it could just be the fact that there is someone out there that is probably attracted to this ugly shit. So with that, I say, hey, you show me a guy or a girl masturbating in their basement watching Netflix, playing video games, eating Wendy's until the end of time, and I'll show you a person who's not causing any trouble. I don't have two shits I can rub together and start a fire of fucks to give when it comes to the activities that happen within a person's mind or what they do by themselves in the privacy of their own homes. Call this nihilist optimistic, but I just don't think there are as many pedos in the world as people think they are. If you're a parent and you're in here, I know you don't want to hear this. Vegas odds, statistical probability, probably nobody wants to fuck your kid. I know you don't want to hear it. You want to think that child is so ultra fuckable that all the pedophiles, they're, they're jockeying for position right now down at the seesaws. Waiting for him to come out of first period. Wait for it. Not that chunky kid, the O'Neal kid. That's what we're all here for. High five, high five. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong though. So for all those itching for some justice, I guess the best thing to do would be to take everyone involved in this movie, including the parents of these teens, line them all up, except for the actors, of course, and then execute them. Execute them in front of the actors of the movie as a warning in case they decide to make something similar down the road with their own kids. Nothing bloody, mind you. We'll just hang them and then put a nice big trough underneath to catch the mess of them releasing their bladders and bowels as they die. There you go. Justice served. What I gather from the preview so far is nothing really different than, say, a 12-year-old Jodie Foster who played a prostitute in the movie Taxi Driver. Happiness, which has this scene between a kid and his pedophilic dad. Everyone else in class has an... I, I want to come too. Have you tried playing with yourself? Do you want me to show you? No, no. I, I'm not normal. There's also the movie Kids, which had a lot to do with kids having sex, spreading disease, and causing all sorts of harm due to their lack of knowledge and education, had to fight really hard against the NC-17 rating. Is it bad that I'm more pissed having to watch this movie and I'm not interested in? I wanted to watch Swallow and Moonlight this weekend, but nope, I got stuck with this. I actually talked to some older parents who have seen it. One told me they got the message that it's not celebrating the behavior. The father I talked to said he wanted to turn it off a few times. He understood generally where it's coming from while never wanting to see it again. Also, just to clarify, the main actors here are teenagers, but they are portraying younger kids. So I think they're like 13, 14, portraying 11-year-olds. In the end, it's just another movie and nothing explicit is really going on, except for some dancing that I'm confident isn't going to have any effect on me or 
99% of the people that see it. So let's watch this fucking shit. Alright, so I watched the movie. Aside from some creepy shots involving close-ups of the girls dancing, I think there was like three scenes. It's a pretty mediocre film. It doesn't go into deep regarding the oppression of Islam, and it doesn't go in deep to the effects of these girls trying to grow up too fast. Really, if you want a more in-depth look, check out Simeon Jimmy's review. I don't think it's worth watching compared to a film like 13, which I saw about 13 years ago. And I can still remember more of that film than I can of this one I just saw a few days ago. And 13 covers girls getting into drugs, cutting themselves, trying to seduce older men. Really, cuties would go with that if it wasn't for whoever was telling the cameraman to get close-ups of these actors' behinds. But let's uh, not get ahead of ourselves. To sum up, the film is about a group of young girls imitating adults they see on things like Instagram and music videos on their phones in order to get validation from people. It's a movie that brings attention to the idea of, hey, maybe we shouldn't be giving elementary school kids phones that have unlimited internet access. One scene they're clearly watching porn in the bathroom of the school. The main character, Amy, is being tugged into two directions, one by her very strict religion that suggests she may be married off to an older man before she turns 18. And then there's these shallow mean girls who seem to only care to focus on their looks and get recognition, naively unaware of the harm they set themselves up for, and the terrible people they can end up being or interacting with. In fact, at one point, Amy pushes the larger girl of their group into the river so she can take her place at a competition at the last minute, almost drowning her. There wasn't much of an emotional impact on me regarding this movie. Then again, this is a guy who has an ugly cry over a cartoon purple gorilla named Tuba. So it could be my wiring is all fucked up. Honestly, I think it's more productive to check out the Social Dilemma documentary on Netflix, which goes more into the reality that is addictions to social media and the effects it has on young people and adults. A lot of people think Google's just a search box and Facebook's just a place to see what my friends are doing. What they don't realize is there's entire teams of engineers whose job is to use your psychology against you. This wasn't really worth it. It's not worth watching. It's not worth the outrage. If it wasn't for this poster and all the reactionaries banking on it, I wouldn't even have known its existence or given any attention. The girls in the entire movie get rejected by every single adult as they, as they encounter them. Like, what the fuck are you doing? You should be kids, you should be playing with dolls or something, as one person said. The only one that really gives me a really big creepy vibe is the guy in the laser tag arena. Like, what the fuck? Like, this guy looks like a fucking rapist. And I think that's what the movie was kind of suggesting in a way that I think that's what the movie was implying that these girls are potentially setting themselves up to be violated by someone who's uh, stronger, older, and much more capable of mentally manipulating these people. They even go on like an Omegle chat and then immediately when the guy sees him and he's like, what the fuck is this? You guys are kids. Get the fuck out of here. But I think the worst part of this movie is that the message is just so ham-fisted at the end. It's just so rushed. Here's how the final scenes play out. Amy gets rejected by her mother due to her behavior regarding her religion. And so she dresses up like a slutty clown and then meets up with her friends at the competition at the last minute. And she starts dancing with them at the competition. Everybody's booing. Well, except for this guy. This guy seems to be digging it for some reason. I think someone needs to pay this guy a visit. But in the middle of the routine, all of a sudden, Amy just has like an epiphany. Some kind of realization that we don't get to see. There's not even a flashback or line of wisdom that was given to her somewhere in the movie. She just turns around, starts crying, and then runs off to her mother. Nothing in the crowd was audible. I mean, nothing was in subtitles at least but she just freaks out goes back to her mother her mother is more accepting all of a sudden tells her she should be her own person doesn't have to come to her father's wedding where he's marrying a second wife now and then she goes outside and jumps some rope just let the kids be kids and don't push adult things on them and don't restrict them with superstition she basically rejects both sides that are tugging at her as if to say that this is what it was all about. No, this movie's about an hour and a half too long. I don't ever want to see it again. It was not very engaging in any way. I'm not sure how much some of these critics got paid to review it. 
but the idea that it's some kind of uh, honest view on coming of age during this time, I, I don't see it. It doesn't go in deep into any of the themes that it portrays. It just kind of just glances over them. It just takes a bit of a glance and skips right over them. And as far as the provocative scenes, as far as I'm concerned, they're there to piss you off. And they probably shot them knowing that it's going to be disgusting to a lot of people. As opposed to something like Stand By Me, where you have a bunch of underage boys that strip down to their undies. At least, I don't know, maybe, maybe that's my hopefulness coming out. Maybe I'm just giving people too much credit. But I don't know, those are just my thoughts. Subscribe, like, share, naturally. If you have any suggestions or topics you want to see covered or artwork to be made, comment down below or commission me through email. CraftyAndy at Patreon if you want to support the show that way for digital art prints, as well as early episodes of the Crafty Art Show when those are finished. Twitch.tv slash CraftyAndy iGymTM for art streams Monday through Thursday, 5 p.m. Friday, 5 p.m. for gaming and 8 p.m. Sunday for gaming. There's an art pal store where the prints are for sale if you want to support the show that way. If not, there's always just subscribing, liking, and sharing. Until next week, stay creative.